Good afternoon guys from the very busy Cologne railway station in Germany. Uh, I'll tell you what, Cologne's a great place. Uh, I've only been here a couple of hours really, but I've had enough time to have a wander around and also go in the cathedral which is just behind me there. There's loads going on, I would definitely recommend it. Anyway, I can't stay here for much longer because I'm taking an ICE train all the way down to Brussels in Belgium uh, in first class. I'm really looking forward to this. It should be a great journey, a couple of hours I think it takes. So why don't you come with me for the ride and I will see you on the train. Cheers for now. Yeah, so like I said, I'd had a couple of hours to wander around Cologne and I can't really start this video properly without giving a nod to the world famous Gothic Cathedral. Now dating back to the 13th century, it's pretty much right on the doorstep of the train station. And so there's no excuse not to visit, is there? The Twin Spires tower 157 metres above the city and really dominate the landscape for miles around, wherever you are. Now, there was a small queue to get in when I was there, but the entry was free and yeah, once inside you can really appreciate the enormousness of the building. An amazing and beautiful place and not to be missed. Anyway, back to the trip and Kohnhautbahnhof is, like I said, right in the centre of the city. In the main hall you have a rather small, I thought, departures board. And access to the 11 platforms and the many shops and food outlets is through the main passageway here and then up the stairs or escalator uh, where if you get the right one you'll be rewarded with this amazing view of the southeastern arch of the roof that's fantastic isn't it now train information is again displayed at platform level as you can see here and oh this is quite useful by the way uh, you get these train consist diagrams where you just find your service and then you can see what's on it and more importantly whereabouts your carriage is going to be uh, if you were a train spotter, uh, which I'm not by the way, uh, this must be one of the most picturesque stations to spend a few hours at, you know, especially on a day like this. Now, there's so much going on as well. Uh, the trains arrive over the Hohenzollern Bridge that spans the River Rhine. You can walk across this, uh, incidentally, and get really close to the trains, uh, whilst also admiring the thousands of padlocks locked to the fencing between you and the tracks. Now, I wish I'd had more time in Cologne, to be honest. I really enjoyed myself, and yeah, I would definitely recommend it to anyone. Right, so here was our train, a Deutsche Bahn ICE 3, or Intercity Express 3, a class 406, 4602, I think I've got that right, but I'm sure you'll tell me if I haven't. Uh, anyway, it's uh, yeah, capable of a top speed of 320 kilometres an hour. Now, we wouldn't be going quite that quickly today, uh, but as I understand it, uh, these particular sets are used for cross-border travel. Uh, because they are able to operate on different electrification systems. Again, uh, please comment below if you can add more detail to that statement. As per usual, I'd positioned myself miles away from where the train actually stopped. Uh, but fortunately, I was in the rear carriage, where, after a rather chaotic boarding, I was able to make my way into the Panorama Lounge area, which is just through this glass partition here. Now notice the glass to the driver's cab here, which can be frosted or unfrosted to give you a great view of the track. As you can see, it was frosted today, unfortunately. Other than that, though, the first impressions were, yeah, quite posh, really. I was in seat 102 today, and there were just eight seats in this section, laid out in a tiered 2-1 configuration. And we'll have a closer look at the seat once we get going, shall we? We actually left seven minutes late due to a technical issue that was left unexplained. Um, all good, though. Uh, we slowly made our way through the suburbs of Cole towards our first stop, which would be Arken HBF. Now, to be honest, this first leg would prove to be fairly unexciting in terms of scenery. Well, it was a nice day and the ride was certainly smooth and relaxing.
Right, so the one other passenger in this small compartment left the train at Arken, uh, which gave me the opportunity to explore this area in a little bit more detail. And as you can see, each seat has a padded headrest with the embroidered ICE logo on it. I quite like this colour scheme by the way, it was quite understated and suited to the first class experience I thought. Now there's a drop down armrest here and yeah looking at the floor you can see the tiered seats uh, which I guess is uh, designed to give everybody a better view of the cab, <laughs> if only. Uh, down the side of the seat we have a conventional power socket for electronic devices. And uh, just above that is the seat recline lever. There is also an at-seat audio system, uh, which was switched on, uh, but uh, as with many of these relics, it, it didn't actually produce any meaningful noise. In any case, most people use onboard Wi-Fi these days, don't they? And I'm pleased to report that this was excellent, really fast and loaded everything. I'd go as far as to say that this was the best onboard Wi-Fi I'd ever had. I was even able to watch live streaming channels on YouTube. There's a QR code on the back of the seat, so where you can rate your ride, and a coat just to the side. The drop-down table, it's sturdy enough, though it didn't appear to slide forwards or backwards. A great legroom, as you would expect from all these seats in first class. Above the window is the digital reservation display indicator and individual reading light buttons. The lights themselves are built into the roof. And note no overhead racks, a luggage provision is instead behind the second single seat. Uh, windows have pull down blinds as you would expect. We pulled into Liège, uh, which as you can see was pretty busy. I was feeling a bit hungry at this point, so after we left uh, I decided to go and check out the dining car. It was quite quiet in here. I thought I'd have a quick beer, which was okay price-wise, three euros and thirty cents. But the menu was quite extensive as you can see here, so you're not going to go hungry on these trains are you? Now most of the dining car area was fitted out with these kind of stand-up tables uh, where you can also lean against the side of the train. However, uh, there was a much more pleasant area of adjacent seating which I thought was really comfortable. And uh, to be honest, if I was travelling standard class, I would have spent most of my time in here and you know, maybe spent a little bit more money on food and drink as a consequence. So after my beer, it was a good chance to have a walk through some of the seating configurations on this train. Now, adjacent to the board bistro, uh, we have standard class, which starts with three compartments that seat five or six people. And I reckon you need to book these pretty early if you want them. They're great for families though, aren't they? And then you get the normal 2-2 configuration, which is laid out in uh, both table and airline style seating. And as you can see there is ample provision for luggage here with spacious roof racks running on both sides above the seats. Finally. Spatial awareness. There are two first class carriages on this train, separated from standard class by means of this glass partition. The first of these carriages is not too dissimilar to the one we just walked through, in so much as it again has a mixture of open, mainly airline style seating, and three compartments at the far end. Now, there were two toilets in this carriage, so I felt it was probably a good time to carry out a quick loo review. Okay, latch locking door, and the first thing I thought was it was really dimly lit. Anyway, a large mirror and corner sink with sensor activated tap and soap dispenser.
and I think this was a soap dish. Now this was interesting, a disinfectant with instructions on how to wipe the toilet seat. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Nice idea though. And toilet roll is here and a paper towel with litter bin back next to the sink. Now, incidentally there is an accessible toilet with baby changing facilities in the standard class carriage back past the dining car. A push button flush, handrail and coat hook if you can find them in the dark. They're all good though and stocked and working as expected. I headed back to my seat through the other open first class carriage. And we were getting close to Brussels by now and so it was time to relax again for this final part of the journey through the outskirts of the capital. We arrived at Brussels midi five minutes late, which was no big deal for me. The Deutsche Bahn emailed me with ETAs right the way through my journey, which was really useful. The price I paid for this one-way first-class ticket was €29.90, Euros and 90 cents, which I didn't think was bad value at all really, but like I said earlier, for even better value, in the future I would probably buy a standard class ticket and then just perch myself in the dining car for most of the journey, I think. Okay guys, and that was Cologne to Brussels Midi on the ICE, uh, this one here behind me, uh, incidentally. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comments below, I thought it was pretty good, it was clean, efficient, everything worked. Well thanks very much for watching anyway, I hope to uh, see you on another adventure of mine soon, and as always guys, cheers for now.